Happy New Year. I hope your holiday was good. Yeah, this is a good day. It's a good day to uh, to move and get back on track or stay on track wherever you're at. That's perfect. <laughs> you're here, and that's the main thing. I got a great session planned for us today. We're going to be doing work from the ground up. I hope you guys are feeling good today, but please remember to follow the feel good principle. It feels good. You might be doing something good for yourself. If it feels sketchy, if it feels painful, if the boom, if you're hearing a lot of sounds and cracking and popping, that may be an indication that you need to modify what you're doing to make it work for you. And the other thing I want you to please be aware of is that at any time during the session today, if you guys find a position that you feel is especially beneficial or especially helpful, spend some more time there. You know, this movement session is all about you. We're basically just spending some time moving together. I'm giving you some ideas of how to move and then you just basically go from there. So if you find yourself doing something completely different, that's totally fine. Um, that's actually my preference for you is to make sure that you're making this movement session an intimate experience with yourself, um, with your higher power, and just making sure again that it works for you. Okay guys, we're gonna start on the ground. I don't know about you, but the holidays usually bring lots of food and lots of treats and lots of, you know, um, what do you call those? I don't know, excuses? <laughs> For eating in ways. So anyways, we're going to start on the ground today. We're going to start with some opuhuli, which is the abdominal massage, and we're going to go from there. So I hope you guys like the session today. I think you will. I know I'm going to enjoy it. I'm ready for it. So let's get right into it. So let's go ahead and come onto the ground, please. And from the ground, you're just getting into a comfortable position and, and your knees could be bent or straight. Choice is yours. I'm going to probably do a little bit of both. But when you when you bend your legs and you massage your stomach, what's nice is that you, you put slack in the abdominal tissues so you can actually press a little bit deeper um, without having to press, press through as much tissue or as much uh, muscular tension, such as when we have our legs straight. The abdominal area gets a little bit tighter, which is which is fine as well. They both have benefits. So allow the knees to drop from side to side and just let your hands cruise across the lowest part of your abdomen, sides and back. So the abdominal area, front, sides and back. Okay, we're just cruising around nice and easy. Our next movement today, we're getting right into it, is gonna be some rolling. Our rolling is going to be used to massage the body very generally. So all you're going to do is you're going to place one arm above the head and you're going to press through the opposite leg foot and just roll onto your stomach. That's it. Okay, once you get to the stomach, just kind of allow the ground to massage the front side of the body. From here, bend the knee, reach it back, massage the side. And now I'm massaging the back and then we switch sides. So again, I bend the knee, foot flat on the ground, arm is straight, press through this heel, roll onto your stomach, nice and easy. Or maybe add a little rocking and then come right back to your back side, switch sides. Nice and easy, nice and relaxed. Just exploring the sensations, elongating your breathing, making the inhalation and the exhalation extra long, starting to wiggle your fingers and toes and bringing some life into all the different parts of the body. Perhaps post up on the elbows, shake out your caboose. Okay, our next movement is gonna be rocking. So let's go ahead onto our backsides. Knees are bent. Now from here, we're going to bring our knees up towards our chest, feet off the ground. You're just going to tuck your chin towards your chest and use momentum of arms and legs 
to bring you forward and back. This is massaging the back. This is one of my favorites in the morning, you know. Maybe you've been sleeping in that preferred position. That might not be all that ideal for your body, but it's the position that you feel most comfortable. Well, anyways, when I do this rocking, I feel like it helps to massage and realign my spine. That's the way I feel about it. You can add some variations here, extending through the legs, bringing the knees together versus further apart. Choice is yours. Simple rocking, fam. Simple rocking. We're just doing two sets of this um, first series of movements. And then we'll get into some more functional movements. You want to add a little get up, feel free. You want to add a little bit of variation with how you lay your legs out, feel free. Okay, so right back into our opal huli, one more set. So just gently massaging into the abdominal area, make this work for you. Right, so here you see me doing another variation. I'm just bending both knees, one leg's down, one leg's up, and I'm massaging into the front and back sides. Now, as you massage, make sure that you're breathing expansively into those areas, okay? So I'm not just massaging from the outside in, but I'm massaging from the inside out by taking my attention into the area that I'm massaging, and I'm, you can add whatever you want to this whole process using your imagination. It's really quite wonderful. Okay. Well, another 30 seconds. Nice and gentle and easy. Maybe take the stroke up a little bit higher. This helps to kind of mobilize the shoulders a little bit. And again, just bringing some attention into the different content, contact points of your body to the ground, especially the feet. That's our primary contact point. And we're always wearing those foot coffins, AKA shoes, okay? All right, so right back into our rolling, one last set. So again, whatever variation you wanna use is fine. If you wanna lead with the foot, get some ad additional stretching and mobilization of the leg, feel free. But this is really light and gentle. This is, this is not all that complex, not all that intense. We're just gently integrating some simple movements into the body. Thirty seconds left, allowing the ground to massage the body. Okay, so the massage is applying a compressive force into the body, and what that does is it squeezes out the fluids, and once you take the pressure off, the fluids return, and thus we have increased circulation. This is our first movement class of the year, so I got to really make it count. I don't know about you. All right. So from here, going right back into rocking, one last set. Okay. So forward and back. This time, if you want to add a little bit, feel free. Start to add a little bit of a movement towards the middle position. Excuse me. That. Perhaps you want to add a get up. That's on you. Oops, wardrobe issues, excuse me. Perhaps you want to make it more of a break fall. That's cool too. So you can come from your standing position, rock, come back up. Make it work for you. You know what to do. It's 
all sorts of variations that we can get into. Okay, guys, we're getting into our main set now. We're going to start with some knee walking. Now, just so you guys know, most of these movements, actually, most of my movements I ever do come, they're inspired by this guy named Kellen Mylad. He's my movement mentor. He's amazing. Anyways, we're going to start with some knee walking. All it means is you're going to get on your knees and you're going to walk around your space. Now, perhaps that's a little bit hard on the knees. Maybe you need to get a pillow in action here and maybe just apply that wherever you're going to go with your knees or maybe if you got two pillows even better yet <laughs> something like that in any case we're moving around on the knees perhaps you do it from a high kneeling position or maybe you take a low kneeling position. Maybe you move in and out between those positions. Choice is yours. Okay. Just going to walk around on the knees. And again, if this is uncomfortable with your toes pointed, for me, this is sometimes a little uncomfortable. I point my toes and it changes the, um, the pressure in my knee. Makes it a little bit more doable. Okay. So from here, we're gonna do some ankle rolling. It's as simple as it sounds. So from our kneeling position, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take one foot out to the side and we're gonna roll over that ankle and roll in and out. We'll start with a basic pattern of in and out. And what we're doing here is we're applying pressure into different parts of our foot. So you can roll the foot completely over and then, of course, let's switch sides. So again, from our kneeling position, the foot comes out to the side and I simply roll over the middle, middle, I don't know, just roll your foot. The languaging is constantly developing. So thank you for your patience. Rolling the foot. We're trying to apply pressure into our foot, massaging our foot with the ground and also adding some nice mobilizations. Don't forget the arms now. Just because we're focusing on the feet doesn't mean we can't add things with the arms. It just so happens that our focus is the feet. Okay, from here, we're going to move our attention up the chain into our knees and we're going to do some kneeling get ups. So, from your knees, all you're going to do is you're going to tuck your toes under or flex your toes, place your hands on the ground and come up to a standing position, lower yourself right back down into your knees, okay? So that's part one. Part two is knee circles. So we come to standing and we're gonna do a couple knee circles one direction, a couple knee circles the other direction. Now this is massaging the tibia on the femur. So we're massaging the depths, the deepest part of our knee joint. And then we come right back down into our kneeling position. Okay, so step one, come to standing. Step two, mobilize those knees. Stay nice and loose in the body. Make sure that you're breathing slowly and in a relaxed way. Come down nice and easy. Put some pressure into those toes. Come right back up. Okay, so let's move further up the chain now into the hips. So we're going to start with a wide, standing wide stance. So from our standing wide stance, what we're going to do is we're going to simply take our hands on our hips and we're going to rotate through the hips. So you're just going to feel a nice gentle sensation of stretch or activity in the hips. So you're just gently shifting or rotating your upper body and noticing what happens deep inside the hips. So that's step one. Step two is going to be circles, trunk circles. So you're simply massaging the hips and massaging the lumbar spine with these trunk rotations, okay? So you have your trunk rotations this way, 
and then you have trunk circles going this way. So really explore whatever sensations are feeling best for you today. Stay nice and strong, nice and relaxed all at the same time. Okay, now from here, we're gonna take our attention up the chain and do some shoulder rolling. So now we're just rolling through the shoulders. So this is where you can start to be creative. Perhaps you lower yourself down into that kneeling position and get some nice movements going that way. Perhaps you go forward with your rolling. Perhaps you use some of those movements that we just did while you do your rolling. Okay, so this is really good for reducing tension in those muscles that hold a lot of stress or hold a lot of tension as a result of being stressed, right? Or distressed rather. Remember, stress, <clears throat> stress, stress in and of itself isn't good or bad. It's it's how your body deals with it. Okay. So we have our standing shoulder rolling. And this one I like because I can really get my whole body into it. And that to me feels really, really good. I can move them as a team. I can add some gentle massage, another beautiful add-on, okay? All right, guys, so right back into our foot and ankle rolling. So from our kneeling position, we're just gonna point our toes and we're just gonna roll over the top of our foot. This time, I wanna see if you can move your body to put some pressure into the top side of that foot, okay? And you can even get up and lower yourself down with those toes pointed. Just notice how that feels. Massage the foot, roll the ankle, and then make sure that you switch sides. Okay, so we're rolling those ankles and progressively adding different variations, angles, and pressures into the foot. So you can try you know, uh, inverting the foot where you put the pressure on the outside and stand up from that position. You can do it from a medial position where you're uh, everting your foot. So many variations, just make sure it's safe for you, okay? And make sure you're switching your feet. Okay, so right back to our kneeling get up with knee, uh, what do you call them? Maybe knee circles, how about that? So from here, come to standing, get some nice rolling through the ankle. Play around with different positions. Maybe you wanna try your split stance knee movement. So it's the same thing as this one, only I split my stance. Just thinking about how many different ways you can move your body and how can you make these movements match what you might be doing in your daily life. Maybe reaching over to pick something up. Maybe you're in a weird tight space and you gotta, you know, move your body in a certain way. The more realistic you make these movements and the more context you add um, tends to have a really good benefit. Massage into those knees, come in and out through that knee, or kneeling get up. Okay, so let's go right back to our wide stance hip movements. So from our wide stance, we're going to start just by rotating our trunk from side to side, noticing the sensations here. You can add a little bit of a variety here so that you're maybe bending the knees, bending and straightening those knees. And now we're gonna add hip circles. So before it was trunk, now it's gonna be hip, okay? 
So with the hands on the hips, you're just gently mobilizing through the lowest part of your spine, okay? So circles in one direction, make sure that you're really long through the spine without extending. You wanna create length, but keep those ribs somewhat down, okay? So again, you're doing nice, gentle hip circles. You might notice that if you go in one direction, it's pretty good. And then the other direction, you're making like some sort of oval or half circle. <laughs> so that's an indication that you need to spend a little more time there, perhaps. Woo! Okay. So from here, right back into our shoulder rolling. Okay. So this time we're going to add a little bit to it and add more of an arm sweep. So before we were doing these, now we're just going to extend through the arm. And so just really reaching. You could be standing right now too. That's totally fine. I just thought maybe if you saw my face, that might be good at this moment. Maybe not. If not, turn away. <laughs> okay, so just adding some nice gentle movements, maybe adding some swimming motions, some breast stroke, maybe some regular stroke. And I want to encourage you to think about the movements that you don't typically do. So if we're always here, think about being here, okay? And the importance of stretching and contracting the muscles and tissues in ways that they don't typically go. And that helps to add to your movement, daily movement nutrition. Okay, guys. So moving in our into our next set, we're going to go right back into our foot and ankle rolling one last set. Okay, so remember, all we're doing is ankle rolling. Now, however you do that is totally cool. This time for me, I'm going to add a little bit. I'm going to come to my backside, roll over, but I'm really focusing my attention on what's happening in my feet and the ankle rolling and having pressure applied to it on the front or the top, the bottom, the sides, every little thing. Okay, I wanna play around with those get-ups. Maybe I have one ankle down, one ankle on the side. You know, sometimes in life, the road gets a little bumpy and in more ways than one. So the more we train our bodies to be able to be resilient and adaptable um, for whatever life throws us is really important. And our foundation, this is the key right here, man. These feet, got to work the feet. Okay, so right back into our kneeling get-ups. So from your kneeling position, tuck the toes under, come to standing, rock out some circles. Come right back down to the knee, maybe add some knee walking. Staying nice and light on the knees. Now, if those knees are feeling painful, this isn't the move. Coming down onto your knees isn't the move. You're gonna definitely wanna add some sort of cushion. But if you can do it this way, this is also beneficial, okay? So again, get yourself standing, get yourself into some knee movements, knee rolling or circles. And keep it going. Again, adding that split stance variation. So just adding some nice gentle circles. Perhaps I emphasize the movement of the back or excuse me, the front leg versus the back. So the back leg is straight on this one. Switch sides but make sure it's nice and slow. This is like moving the WD-40 inside the hip, inside the hinge. That's what this is, okay? All right, wide stance, hip twists, and trunk hip circles, okay? So again, starting with some gentle rotations here, 
and then integrating the trunk circles along with the hip circles. Perhaps you do a little bit more to make the movement more than just a circle. Okay, use these movements to floss the nerves and to move the connective tissue in as many different ways as you can. Perhaps at this stage of the game, you're starting to integrate all the different joints from the ground up. So maybe it's like a dance, I don't know. So you're just moving through the joints, make it work for you, you know? I was feeling a little bit something in my right hip, so I just put my feet closer together, shake that out, move that out, and I'm coming right back to it. Maybe I need to make my stance different, okay? Always a million different variations. Okay, so now let's stay with this wide stance. And for our shoulder, we're gonna take one palm up, one palm down. You choose which one you wanna do and we're gonna to reach towards the side, okay? So one palm up, one palm down. You know what I'm talking about. And imagine that you're wringing those shoulders out like a sponge, okay? So you're just moving those shoulders through internal and external rotation, adding an overhead reach. Starting to get a little bit warm. Hope you are too. Nice, strong, solid base of support. Just adding some gentle shoulder movements. Okay, so this is all full body now. Just move the body. That's what we're looking for here. How many different variations of movement or how many different expressions can you make with your body, okay? All right, guys, let's move into our next set. We're gonna start with the hip hinge. We'll go to a squat and we'll do some tripod transitions. So let's start with our feet shoulder width apart your basic hip hinge, so let's bounce it out first. Get the body nice and relaxed. Get some length through the spine and shake out your caboose. When you're ready, inhale. As you exhale, you hinge forward at the hips. As you inhale, you come right back up, okay? So inhale from your upright position, nice and long, wide through the shoulders. And as you exhale, so you're nice and strong this whole time. So everything is wide through the shoulders, long through the spine. And feel the power of those posterior hips. Okay, bounce it out whenever you need to, to stay nice and relaxed. And then when you're ready, maybe you want to add a little context, touch the ground. That helps. Okay, so from right from here, moving right into our squat. So it starts the same as the hinge. So length through the spine, breathe in. As you exhale, hinge at the hips, drop the weight down, come right back up. Bounce it out. Take in your breath. Exhale, come down into your squat. Perhaps add a couple bounces in that area. Inhale from the upright position. Exhale, hinge, lower. Make yourself light. Make yourself relaxed and strong all at the same time. Add whatever variety you want. As long as you got a squat in the mix, we're good. About 10 seconds. And we're going to be moving into some tripod transitions, which will involve lowering ourselves to the ground 
and a rocking getup. Okay, so here we go. From these same two movements, you have the hinge, the squat. Now you roll back and rock up, shake it up. Okay, so hinge, squat, rock, come right back up. Nice and easy. So inhale from that upright position. Exhale. Shh. Come up. Inhale. Exhale. Shh. Now make sure you watch where you're rolling. You don't want to smack your dome on something in your room. Or wherever you are. 20 seconds, stay nice and light on those feet. Shake out any unnecessary tension, inhale, exhale. Couple that breath with the movement. Always ready. Okay guys, right back to the hip hinge. Let's get it, this time we're doing it from a split stance. So first one, shoulder width apart. This one, take one foot back, same exact thing. So we're length through the spine, wide through the shoulders, inhale, exhale. As you exhale, you're gonna hinge forward. The only difference now is you have a split stance, okay? Inhale, exhale. Switch sides, okay? So. Switch sides whenever it's convenient for you. Okay, maybe you're alternating every other one. I don't know. Maybe you're doing about five to eight reps and then switching. Choice is yours. The idea is to get a hip hinge. Okay, and we're adding a nice split stance. So inhale, exhale. Trying to maintain that length through the spine. A lot of times we try to compensate when we don't have the range that we think we need to have but I would encourage you to stick to the hip hinge and focus on lengthening the lower body and stretching the lower body versus trying to get the movement through the spine. You can do both, it's okay, um, but for this one, I would encourage you to focus on the lower body aspect, okay? All right, so moving right into our squat, same thing. So we have our split stance, now we just add the squat. So just lower down, Come right back up, maybe switch sides right away, lower down, maybe touch the ground. I don't know, choice is yours. And maybe you add some context by getting close to a wall, or maybe you're in a room that's really tight and you got plants and all stuff, all sorts of stuff in your environment that you have to navigate. Great, the more context you add, the more productive these movements are. So really make sure that you recognize context as being a very important component to our movement practice. Okay. Touch, 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 touch. About 20 seconds left. Maybe you got, you know, something in your room that you can pick up and then put somewhere else. Maybe you want to focus on creating length through the spine and being nice and strong there. Whatever you like. Okay, moving right back into our tripod transitions of sorts. Okay, so this time, instead of doing our roll back, this time from a wide stance, we're going to place one hand on the ground and we're going to bring one leg under, rock, and come right back up. Switch sides, okay? So from that wide stance, start to lower yourself down. Gently place the hand on the ground. Bring one leg underneath. Rock. Come right back up. Just like that. It's that easy. Well, maybe not easy, but it's simple. Simple movements that the body should be able to do under 
most circumstances or uh, uh, most situations, but if it's not working that way for you, adapt, make a variation or a modification to make the movement work for you. Okay, we're coming from a standing position, putting one hand into the ground, and then lowering ourselves all the way down. That simple. Okay, guys, one last set of the hip hinge, okay? So this time in our hip hinge, all we're gonna do is we're gonna add um, a little bit of a reach, okay? So we're gonna do a split stance, hinge, and reach. Switch sides. Split stance, hinge, and reach. So if this time you wanna, you can take, you know, uh, put a little bend in the spine, that's okay too. But we're just gonna hinge forward and reach towards the ground. If you wanna do it with your feet parallel, hip hinge, touch the ground, sweep the hands around, perhaps even just walking in this hip hinge position. For me, this one feels really excellent. I really enjoy the sensation on this one. And then come right back up, okay? So you're hinging, touching the ground, and walking those feet around a little bit, different positions. So it's almost like a crawling when you're not putting as much weight into the wrists quite yet. Okay, so from here, moving right back into our squat. This time what we're gonna do is something called a squat reversal. So instead of just doing a typical squat, we're gonna step behind and then we're gonna squat down. Now watch this, this is the reversal. And then stand up, okay? So I lower down, reverse, and stand up. So all it is, is I have one foot behind, I lower down, I pivot on my feet, and then I stand up, okay? And then I switch sides. So lower, and come right back up. And this time I step back with the other leg. Lower, pivot, Stand up, okay? Just like that. So it's just playing around with different positions using our deep squat. Okay? About eight more seconds. All right, guys. From here, we're moving down into our tripod lowering one last set okay so from your wide stance lower one hand down bring the leg under rock come right back up so slow down the movements to make sure you're exploring different sensations that are important for you the body likes to communicate and constantly provides feedback via the nervous system. However, you can grow your, your capacity with your nervous system through intimacy. The more you practice tuning in to the sensations of the body and learning how to translate those sensations productively, the better. Then what happens is through your daily life, you start to become aware when you need more movement because the body's gonna tell you, hey, we need a little bit of that spinal wave thing that you do. Oh, okay, no worries. Just let me leave the, the line at Jewel first. Let me get into the car first. Okay, so from there, we're moving into our next set. We're gonna start with some knee hand crawl variations. Um, so, Come down onto the ground, knee hand crawl position, please. The first movement is gonna be a step out lunge. So let's find ourselves in good position first and start with some gentle body weight shifting just to feel this position, okay? 
perhaps you want to add a little bit of wrist rolling before we get started. Just loading the wrists and fingers in different positions. Now, as a um, professional uh, licensed massage therapist, I use these movements specifically to maintain the health of my wrist and fingers. Okay, so I'm pressing into the back sides of my wrists, not just the palms, but also the fingers and the back sides, the top sides. I really want to put some emphasis, put some pressure in there. Okay. Well, five seconds, and then we'll get right back into our our focus, which is going to be a alternating step out lunge. So you'll notice that I have my I have a four point stance, and then I just replace my hand with the foot. Okay, so this is the basic movement. Now see if you can do that slow and control, so that you're not stomping or flopping around. And if you need to take a few more steps to get there or you're not able to step out as far, that's okay. Find, meet your body where you are and then go from there. We're all about slow and gradual improvement. And enjoy the process. Maybe try putting something in your brain that you're thankful for this morning. Notice what that does to your movement. Notice what that does to the sensations through your movement. About 20 seconds left. Keep going, keep moving. If you wanna add a little bit, you can. You can always add. And you can always take away. All right, guys. So from here, we're going to do some transitions from a knee hand or foot hand crawl to inverted crawl. So take your choice, knee hand or foot hand crawl. And when you're ready, we're going to pass one leg under. So if you're not sure how to do that, just lower your hips towards one side. And then take your top hand, bring it to the back, lift your hips up. Now you're in inverted crawl. You want to back up. Go right through the same process you used to get there. Now you're back into your knee hand crawl position. You can crawl around your environment. And when you're ready, lower those hips, bring the leg under, and now you're in your inverted crawl. Make sure that your shoulders stay in a good position. Not stay, but move through good positions. So you don't want to be collapsed through the shoulders the whole time. You want to practice strengthening those shoulders by moving the shoulders down away from the ears. Okay, when you're ready, come right back into your knee hand crawl. Crawl around in your environment. Three seconds. Okay, so right back to our wrist rolling. Okay, so this time let's try some different movements with the wrist and try lowering your upper body a little closer towards the ground. So it's the same wrist roll. I'm just getting closer to the ground and adding some attention into the shoulder. So you'll notice as I come down, I don't want to collapse. I want to bring some activity through my shoulder, but not just down or, or up towards my ear. I also want to bring it down. Okay. So I'm rolling through my wrist, but being very mindful of my shoulder position through the process. Okay, and then I'm gonna switch sides. Perhaps you imagine that you need to move around or under, or maybe you dropped your wedding ring on the ground and it rolled under the, the dresser and you gotta get underneath there and get into a weird position to try to get it. Whatever you need to imagine to make this movement more productive, that's what you do. Okay, so this time we're going to move into our step out lunge or our alternating step out lunge. This time we're going to add a get up. Okay, so from your knee hand crawl position, you're going to step out, stand up, and lower yourself right back down. Okay, so from your knee hand crawl position, 
step up, and then keep going. You'll notice as I come from standing down, I start in the position I used to get up. Add whatever you like here. You want to really dial it up a little bit and get more out of it. Add a shuffle crawl. Tear down the boundaries or the walls that restrict your movement. You start to add variations, little tweaks that work for you. That's so critical. Dial in that breathing as well. Don't forget to breathe now. Okay, so from here, right back into our knee hand or foot hand crawl transitions. So from your knee hand crawl position, you can, now from this position, let's just check in real quick. Make sure that you're wide through the shoulders, almost like you're spreading the floor with your hands. Okay, nice and wide. And play around with that positions. For me, sometimes I like to kind of just bounce up and down and feel the strength in this position. And then when I do my transition, I really want to slow it down. Maybe add a couple shoulder pulses here. Take the foot out, maybe wiggle my toes, okay? Walk around, maybe lift the hips, get a gentle stretch through the shoulders. Slowing down your movement is so productive. It really gives you a chance to dial in your attention on the different sensations in each of the different parts of the body so that you can make modifications and adjustments where needed. Okay, guys, last set of wrist rolling. Let's do it from a standing wide stance position, please. So let's come to standing. Get a hip hinge rocking. Bam. Now we're going to shift our weight from side to side. And as we do, we're going to add our gentle wrist movements. Okay. So really play around with the idea of pressing into those back sides of the hands while you add those movements through the lower body. Okay. So through the trunk, you're moving adding different pressures through the fingers. Make sure that it feels good. If it doesn't feel good, you need to change what you're doing. Even if it just means using your hand and rolling it that way, it would be better for you to move um, through movements that, that don't hurt. Um, and that are more mindful and controlled than move through things that hurt your body. It's not very productive. Okay, so moving right back into our alternating step out lunge get up. Okay, so from your knee hand crawl position, perhaps this time you start with a little bit of a crawl, then you step out, stand up, walk a couple paces, step out. Now you're right back into your crawl. Okay, so again, step up, step up, walk it out. Make sure that you're nice and long through the spine. Step out, lower down, replace that foot. Just like that. That's how we do it, Daniel. Okay, so step out. Really try to get the movement happening not just at the knee, but at the hip and the ankle and foot. So you do that by changing the position of the hip. So even from the step out lunge position, I have a lot of range of motion I can explore 
as I move through these positions. Take your time and explore what's available in each one of these movements. The variations are limitless, truly. Okay, so from there, moving right back into our knee hand crawl to inverted crawl transition. So let's get it. Okay, so you're just gonna crawl around and when you're ready, lower the hip down, take the leg under. Now you're in an inverted crawl. I'm gonna add a little bit on this one. Add a little bit of a kick over. So this time what I'm doing is I'm just kind of kicking up over my head, finding the ground safely and comfortably behind me and then move around. Got about 30 seconds left. Now, if at any time this becomes uncomfortable, modify what you're doing. If your wrists are starting to hurt, make a loose fist. As long as you keep it straight and you keep it pain-free, it's all you need. 10 seconds. Okay, guys, we're moving into the cool down. So what we're going to do from this position here is we're going to start with a um, couch stretch or a modified couch stretch. So for this one, I would encourage you to get a pillow or something underneath your knees. So we're going to find ourselves in a split squat position, length through the spine, and we're just going to focus some attention on each of the areas that we started with today. So first one is gonna be the ankle. So we're just gonna shift our body weight into different positions, just loading the toes and ankles into different positions. Now my attention just isn't, isn't just in the front, it's also in the back. So I'm flexing my toes, I'm pressing into the ground strongly. If I needed to stand up at any time, I can do that, okay? And as I change the position of my hips and bring my attention into my hips, I notice that I have new variations, new angles, new directions of force, load, pressure, whatever you want to call it, being applied into the joints. Okay, let's go ahead and switch sides. So bring the other knee up. Again, getting into that focus on the feet first and foremost. Perhaps you come up a little bit and roll the top side of the foot, pressing it into the ground. Just get yourself into different positions because that's what life is gonna throw you, is variation. Plan and prepare for as much as you possibly can. And at the very least, cultivate adaptability and strength in the body, okay? And we do that through movement, variation, and focusing our attention on efficiency. Okay, let's switch legs again, please. Okay, so this time I'm gonna add a little bit of an overhead reach so I can get a nice crescent stretch rock in here. I'm reaching towards the sky, getting a nice opening through the front side adding some gentle rotations through the neck and mid back as well maybe add a rotational reach as well any variation you want to add to explore whatever movements your body needs to get that optimal circulation and well-being let's switch legs one more time please so again, nice position first and foremost. And then from here, let's explore. Maybe you wanna take your body weight forward as far as you can go and then back as far as you can go. Whatever you do, I would encourage you to try to balance the movements somewhat from side to side so that you're doing similar movements. And then when you've done similar movements after that, you wanna add the intricate details that this side needs versus the other side. Whatever your body needs, that's what you do. And you wanna add a reach, a reach, 
for an overhead reach, place is yours. Nice and gentle. Starting to dial down your attention into the breathing. Focus in on your breathing. Focus on strength, power, and relaxation all at the same time. Strong and relaxed. I want to encourage you to imagine your body as healthy as it could possibly be. What would it look like? What would it feel like? Okay. Imagine your organs beautiful, healthy, and strong. Come down under your butt, please, into a cross-sit position. You want to sit on a towel for this one you can all we're going to do is we're going to hinge forward at the hips and place our hands on the ground so go ahead and hinge forward nice gentle stretch through the lateral leg posterior hip and also through the back as well okay from here i'm going to put my forearm down on the ground i'm going to add an overhead reach okay so just an alternating overhead reach nice gentle active stretch so this isn't passive we're totally active but you're focusing on relaxation at the same time so see how how little can you do to get into these positions okay so instead of trying to contract every part of your body see if you can focus on just getting into different positions that feel good to you okay it's a nice Stretch, maybe add some arm bone rotations here. Maybe add those wrist curls, some wrist movements here. Hi. Okay, nice and strong. From here, we're gonna add a reach over to the side. So you're gonna put your forearm onto the side and reach overhead and then sweep the arm up switch sides so we're not spending much time there just going to kind of go over unless it feels good for you maybe you're in this stretch and you're like ah this is the one this feels good or maybe you're thinking to yourself ah, i need to change it to work for me feel free okay i happen to be using a cross sit but you can use whatever position works for you perhaps you want to integrate the breath so take your breath in when you're in your central position and as you exhale, sweep that arm over, okay? Let's lay down onto the ground, please. From here, we're gonna post up onto our elbow, onto our side. We're gonna roll onto our stomach and then roll to the other side, just like that. This is what I like to call beach pose. Now, technically, beach pose has a couple different positions. It has this one. And it also has this one, but this is really nice for opening up the lumbar spine and the lateral muscles or tissues of the abdominal wall. Inhale, exhale, nice and relaxed. I like to use these movements to massage and stretch through the hips and the midsection of the body. So nice and relaxed, inhale, exhale. Okay guys, last movement is going to be a Cobra Child's Pose transition. So let's come onto our hands and knees. We're gonna drop our weight back over our heel, shift our body weight forward, move into a nice Cobra Pose, okay? So it's extension and flexion of the spine, all right? So move the weight back, feel the movement of the spine. Inhale, exhale, move those fluids. Focusing on nice and relaxed movements. Play around. Let the body show you how awesome it is. You know, the mind likes to take control all the time, but the body's really awesome at healing itself if we just give it a chance. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and roll onto our back. Let's take a couple nice deep cleansing breaths from this position. I'm just gonna bend my knees, maybe add a couple, couple other movements. Inhale, exhale. Got some beautiful movements in today. I hope that you guys really enjoyed 
that movement session. I know that I did. And I want to encourage you guys to spend a little more time just giving your body any other movement nutrition that it needs before you start your day today. Perhaps you got to get a couple more movements in. That's totally cool. Okay. The idea is to take time every day throughout your day to move. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that movement session first of the year. I told you we're going to get right into it and we're going to take it to the next level this year. 2022, watch out because here we come. You know what I'm saying? It's real easy to get um, bogged down and down about what's going on in the world, but we need to create a change and it needs to start inside here. All right, guys. Um, if you guys need to relax or lay down on the ground longer, please feel free to do so. Take as much time as you need. Let your body communicate with you so that you know what it needs. And make sure that you're translating what it's saying with an optimistic perspective. I like to think of it in terms of like holding God's hand while I start to assess what's going on. Because otherwise I'm like, oh, what's going on? You know, so it's really important to make sure that you have um, a positive perspective. It's not to say that something isn't happening. If something needs your attention and you need to go to a doctor, you need to go to a doctor. Um, at the same time, even though you might be going to the doctor, you want to imagine your health manifesting constantly. So imagine your body is healing now because that's what it's doing. It doesn't think about it. It just does it. So if we think about it, we can encourage it. Okay. So I'm telling you, we're going to take it to the next level. And I don't know about you, but I practice these things every single day. So make sure you guys are integrating and peppering movement throughout your daily grind. Okay. So lots of love to you. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Okay, guys. Peace.